Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I'm going to push my computer back a little bit. Seems to do better like that. Um, move that forward a little bit. Okay, so I'm still working on my music, but I hope you got a chance to go in and listen to the song that I'm speaking about tonight. You make me brave. Who makes you brave? Jesus makes me brave. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight, is that Jesus makes me brave. Or you make me brave. All right, I'm trying to find my music. Not going to show you all my sideways double chin no more. That looked really bad last night. I'm going to try not to do that anymore. I do have a double chin though, but I listen to some of these songs. I want to listen to something else. Oh, I'm going to start right there because I like that song. All right, I've got to get this done. So what I'm listening to is uh, Getting Ready. It's called Getting Ready by Maverick Music. Such a good song. Oh my goodness. Talks about the marriage of the Lamb. I do not know why my, my music is so low, but it's okay. Maybe it needs to be. All right, so I hope you had an awesome day. I went and did what I needed to do today. And um, tomorrow is youth, so I won't be here tomorrow night. I'll be here Thursday, I think. I made me some coffee. Not that I'm sleepy, but it's just... It got really cold in my house. I guess we turned the air conditioner down. And I didn't realize it until just lately, but I was getting a little bit cold. And so I thought I'd make me some coffee. I thought it sounded really good. I just hope that I can sleep tonight. Sometimes what really sounds good at seven o'clock, coffee at seven o'clock, does not work real bad, real good with going to bed. Okay, so let's jump into some prayer. And let's talk about bravery and courage and some of those things tonight. And uh, who makes us brave? Who, who lays everything out for us? And really, all we have to do is be obedient and just step out there in bravery. All right, let's, let's pray. God, we just thank you because you are on your throne and you are in control, God. We just, uh, we're so thankful, God, that you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, our strength, and our refuge, God. God, you do make us brave. You are from everlasting to everlasting, and you will always be, God. You are mighty and powerful and magnificent, God. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and faithful and patient, God. You want none to suffer. You want none to perish. You're, you keep your promises, God. All of your prophecies will be fulfilled. God, thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home. We pray for all the disasters that are going on, God, for people to call out your name 
in their midst of disaster, God, that you would meet them, that you would send people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. God, we just pray for all the people, the many people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, there's just so many. There's so many that have lost loved ones lately. God, we just lift these people up to you. We're thankful, God, that you sent your son to die for us, to offer salvation for us. Just help me to express tonight what you want me to express, God. Give me the words through the Holy Spirit, God. Just remove me from this message and let him speak through me. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Let me get another sip of coffee. I'm trying not to slurp. <laughs> I usually slurp my coffee. I'm trying to be not as rude as I normally am. All right. And so I found some verses that I thought were good for this. Um, there's another one. Maybe that was Joshua 1.9. Alright, let's go to Joshua 1.9. This is the one that sticks out to me because this is the one that um, I hear a lot. I hear this one a lot. Especially last year with all the uncertainty and the things that were going on. Oh, I think I'm looking on the wrong side for Joshua. Come to think of it, he's over here. Okay. Joshua 1 9. Okay. Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid? Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So, that was God speaking to Joshua. Because this was after Moses had died. And so Joshua was in charge now. So God is speaking to Joshua, saying, Have, I not, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. And so Joshua is telling this to the people too. You know, I guess passing on messages from God like Moses did to the people. So we need to be strong and courageous because right now we are in a spiritual battle. I don't know whether you feel it or not, but it is a spiritual battle. And it is, it is a battle between good and evil. Now, Joshua also is the one that um, God told him and the Israelites to march around the wall of Jericho. And I'm uh, just going to see where that story starts. I might read that. Okay, here it is. Sometimes my headings are after, which is so weird, I think. Okay, let's read about this story. I really like this story. You know, God is the one that made them brave. They, they like marched around this city, their enemy, the city of their enemy, like every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, 
Let's read the story. Then on the seventh day, we'll see what happens on the seventh day. So now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thou shalt do six days. So every day for six days they went around the city. That's what God's telling them. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall campus the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the, of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, encompass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the, re and the reward came after the ark, the priests going on the re the re reward came after the ark and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets and Joshua had commanded the people saying ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day i bid you shout then shall ye shout now, whenever God did um, gave instructions like this, they were always specific. They were always very specific, very specific. And he wanted them to obey every letter of the command that he gave them. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about at once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once, and returned to the camp so they did six days so they did this for six days for six days they did exactly what god told them to do and they walked around the city one time then went back to their camp and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times on the seventh day God said, do it seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass that at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing. 
and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, and they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkeys with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein and only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive in her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even until this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So Joshua said that he would spare her. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and, and in the youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout the country. Well, I imagine so, because they were talking about this guy, this crazy guy that led his army around their city one time a day for six times and then seven times and then with a mighty shout and a, and a blast from the trumpets uh, the walls came down and they defeated that city God helped them fight that battle so God gave them God gave Joshua the bravery to do this God made Joshua brave Joshua's a brave warrior, too. Okay, so let's move on. I really wasn't planning on reading that. Um, that is a very good story. So Joshua 6, uh, Jericho, Wall. Okay, just wanted to write that down, that I read that. Okay, so let's move on to, what do we want to move on to? Let's read Hebrews. Hebrews 3, 6. Oh, it's already getting cold. 3.6 But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm unto the end. Okay, I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what it means, but I don't know what it means that... Hmm. Moses very verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as the son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto lost my spot. I 
look down to see. Firm unto the end, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in, in any of you evil heart or unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved for forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to him that believed not? So we see that we could not enter in because of unbelief. So we need to believe. We need to believe. And I don't, you know, some, some of these scriptures, I just don't know what they think that they have to do with. Um, I guess we do have to be brave to believe, to stand up against the unbelief. I guess it does take bravery to stand up and go, hey, I am with Jesus. I'm with Jesus. I am not with the world. I am with Jesus. You know, that takes bravery. It does. So maybe that was, um, that, oh, excuse me. Maybe that did go better than I thought. So that we may boldly say, this is Hebrews 13, 6, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing the heart be established with grace not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle okay so we are not to fear. We are to be brave. We are not to fear. We are to walk in bravery. Let's see if there is one more. Okay, let's do Deuteronomy 31.6. That's way over here, but I think that's the last one we're going to do. I really like the song that I'm listening to. I speak Jesus. Deuteronomy 31 6. 31 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God. He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath shown unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord he is he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. 
He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel. So that was the best way to end this, that God is going to go before us and God is going to make us brave. He does make us brave. You know, God has personally asked me to step out of my comfort zone so many times to where I was just terrified. I was so terrified to do it, but I trusted Him, and what I was afraid of wasn't even real. And so I trusted Him, I stepped out on faith, I followed what I felt like He was telling me to do, and it all came out perfectly well. But it is scary. It is scary to step out on faith. It really is. It is scary to step out of your comfort zone. But when we do, there is nothing that feels any better than knowing that you are being brave and that God is the bravery comes from God like you don't even have to all you have to do is step out in obedience if he says hey I want you to do this do it don't argue with him don't be like Jonah don't be like Jonah and not want to go because you don't like Nineveh that's what I can talk about I can talk about Glen Rose with my Nineveh That's a good idea. I'm doing a testimony tomorrow, and I really, after I volunteered to do it, now I don't know what to say. But I think that's a good one. Okay. And what's so funny is I live in Glen Rose now, but Glen Rose used to be my Nineveh. I didn't want to come here. I was quite comfortable where I was. But you know what? God pushes us out of our comfort zone into something for His honor and His glory and not ours to glorify and honor Him. So that's what God did for me. He pushed me out of my comfort zone. what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Okay. So let's um, I don't know what I'm listening to now. Maybe what I was listening to all go. I don't know. Okay. Let's do my notes today. Well, we did talk about being brave. We talked about that. Okay, so I am going to kind of skip some of this. Okay. lost my earbud okay so child I'm having you step out more and more out of your comfort zone and fear is keeping you from stepping out see because he knows me so completely he knows he knows when I'm a little stressed and I'm you know a little fearful he knows um, you must trust me and overcome the fear and all the false things that go through your mind. What you would give to prevent one child by education from falling into the traps of the predators out there that feed on innocent children of all ages, child. 
So I've talked to you all about Unbound and that I'm volunteering to do presentations of education and prevention for youth. And um, this is what he's talking about. He's really asking me to get way out of my comfort zone. And this week, starting Thursday, I've got to start organizing all my notes and print off everything that I need and start studying because I really know that he wants me to do this. He said, what would you give I will attend to all the details that you have on that you that have you on stop. I mean, I'm not on stop, but I'm not on go either. So you can go and go freely. Child, step out in faith over fear and be brave. I will make you brave. You know that you are moved by the things that you see and hear about human trafficking. I am. I was listening to some testimony of some people last night and I was just heartbroken at what they've been through. And um, it does break my heart. People must be aware of the dangers so they can see the red flags that you have seen, child. I see what you are saying. It is another time that you are mm. asking me to trust you mm. to step out on faith again. I know, God, that every time I do this, it works out for your glory. Help me to remember all the times that you have made me brave and how you were faithful to me, faithful to help me too. Regardless wow. of what happens, please continue wow. being faithful to me. In your obedience, no matter what I ask, I know what you need for success, and I am already working out the details for you. I see where you are and what you need. Trust me, child. Let your words match your actions. So, sometimes we say that we trust God, but we're holding back. And so we're really not showing him that we trust him. If we trust him fully with everything, then we will just be willing to do whatever he wants us to do. And he said, I will be there when you face the waves. I will make you brave. I am with you in all circumstances, child. Take my hand and follow me. I will show you where to step next. And he said, thank you, God, for the encouragement. I will follow you. I know that I have always, that you have always been with me when I have ventured out of my comfort zone. You make me brave, God. You make me brave. I trust you fully for my future. Thank you for meeting me today and giving me encouragement. Um, somehow this song is tied to my dream last night. Help me to remember. I had a dream last night and this song, You Make Me Brave, somebody said, well, you know, that is a good song that you have used for encouragement before. And so, I don't know the rest of the dream. I kind of wish I did. Please keep us safe today and help me to get things lined out to order my steps today, God, for your glory and honor and not mine. I love you, God, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mom and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask, child. Walk with Jesus. Continue to follow him closely. Walk in the spirit, child. Walk in righteousness also. Each day. The reunion is soon, child, but many more need to come too. Keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. True beauty and perfection awaits my children at the end. And I said, Maranatha, God. And I forgot to share what I put uh, with this song. Because I can't remember stuff, apparently, anymore. Mm. I, have a, I have someone who's come in interrupt 
Oh, where is it? Where is my song again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my. I know I shared it. I'm going to refresh it. What's happened the other night? I know I shared it. It's like, where'd it go? I love this song, I Speak Jesus. I already did this message though in this song. Okay, here we are. Okay, my words for today, you make me brave. I love this song and message by Amanda Cook. Please go and listen to these songs because they are very ministering. And Bethel Music, these lyrics are so awesome. I made this lyric video with pictures so I could learn the lyrics of this song because I've actually sang this song in church. This song reminds me that I can do all things through the strength of Jesus. Jesus does make us brave. So many times in my life I have been asked to step out of my comfort zone into what to me could be a roaring wave in obedience to a calling. So many times last year and this year too, I kept I keep hearing be strong and courageous as in Joshua 1.9. Many times we just have to trust God with a bigger picture of what is going on in our lives. He will equip us and empower us to do whatever he calls us to do. I find myself here at this place of trust and a calling that I know some about, but there is much more to learn. But I know who sits on the throne and, I, and who knows all the details, solutions and outcomes. I know who has a plan and purpose for me and wants good things for me. He also wants me to do whatever I do, all for his glory and honor too. As we face the waves of uncertainty, remember that Jesus knows the way through the waves and he will never leave us or forsake us. Is Jesus your savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that's what I wrote today. Like this afternoon, not this morning, because I didn't get a chance to write it this morning. I love this song, too. Take me into the Holy of Holies. Mm. Yeah. We are going to be in the Holy of Holies in heaven. It's going to be awesome. Okay, how do we want to share the gospel tonight? You know, we talked about being brave. Mm -hmm. <coughs> How about mm. this? Steps to peace with God. Mm -mm. Steps to peace with God. Mm. Step one. Mm. God's purpose. Peace uh, and mm. eternal life. Mm. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive mm. eternal life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we have mm. peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Mm -hmm. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him and have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? It's a good question. Why? Why not? Step two, our problem, sin and separation. Sin separates us from God. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey him. Instead, he gave us a will and freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. This side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. 
The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 But your iniquities have separated you from God have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59 2. And so God's remedy is the cross. Step three. God's remedy is the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and <coughs> rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins. Completely bridging the gap between us and God. Hey. Pretend you're in church, okay? God has provided the only way, and we must make the choice. The Bible says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 2. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 5. Very, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. And will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. So step four is our response. We receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says, All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Acts 10.43 Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 So how to receive Christ? Number one, admit you need a savior and that you are a sinner number two be willing to turn from your sins repent that means repent turn away from your sins believe that jesus christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave four through prayer invite jesus christ to come in and control your life through the holy spirit receive him as your savior so i'm going to say this prayer and uh, if you want, you can repeat after me. Or if you want to say your own prayer, if you want to be saved and you want to say your own prayer, that's okay too. All right. Because it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the belief in Jesus. It's the cleansing of your heart. And it's the confessing him as your Savior. So, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus' name, amen. So God's assurance, his word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? He's given you new life. When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. 
Neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8.39 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. So if you did say that prayer, then now you have peace with God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing. Now today is day one of your Christianity journey. And so if you want to learn more about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word every day. Start in Matthew and just read through Matthew, then start on the next one. It's a good place to start. It will show you about Jesus. Pray to God every day. Pray to Him every day and find you some praise and worship music like I like to listen to while I do this. And praise God's holy name. Amen. So it is, uh, I believe that I've done everything that God called me to do tonight. So I am going to do the blessing that is in numbers. And uh, if you hear my son over here in the background, he's sitting in my chair. He's probably hungry. He had a huge chocolate milk for lunch and I need to go feed him dinner. Okay, so this is Numbers 26, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need some peace. Everybody needs Jesus. Jesus is the only answer. Jesus will make us brave. Jesus will walk us through whatever we have to walk through. There are going to be hard things that we have to walk through, but we don't have to walk through them alone. Jesus is always there. Okay, well, i got to figure out what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I think I figured out part of it. While I was going to be on here, so while I was on here, so I am going to pray and um, we will see you not tomorrow but Thursday night. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God. We thank you that you make us brave. We thank you that you call us out of our comfort zone and call us into other things, God. Because once we get there and once we, you empower us and once you equip us the way you want us equipped, the way you want us educated, God, there is just nothing like it. There is nothing like walking in obedience with you, God. There is no feeling like it. God, we thank you. We thank you for calling us to other things, for trusting us to uh, be a part of furthering your kingdom, God. We pray that you would continue to give us the boldness and the bravery and the courage to share your truth, God, unashamedly and, for, and to share the gospel of Jesus unashamedly, God. Just knowing that everyone needs a Savior and everyone needs Jesus, that Jesus died for everyone, everyone in this world. And he loves everyone in this world. You're giving me a great idea, God. Thank you for that. God, I just pray for Josie. If she's still sick, God, I pray that you would heal her body, God. Just help her to be stronger. Be with Mike and the boys. Help him to be the, the godly influence that they need in their lives, God. Draw them closer to you. 
Just pray for anybody, God, who comes here that maybe something that I said is what they need to hear. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I am going to get off of here. Have an awesome rest of your night and awesome tomorrow. And much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.